When I was uh, 12 years old, I had my first skateboard and uh, I experienced uh, the fun sports, so called. And uh, later on, when I was 16, I got some inline skates. Afterwards, wakeboarding came in and snowboarding. And yeah, so I think it's been in my blood for a, a long time already to, uh, to be in, uh, into fun and extreme sports. And when I was uh, 20, 23, I had my, an accident with snowboarding. I crashed on a Langlauf uh, Strecke, Langlauf Loipe. And yeah, I broke my back on uh, TH11-12. And yeah, now I'm paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, when I was lying there, I didn't feel any pain. And yeah, I came straight and made a movement with my body. It was very strange and immediately I thought, here is something wrong. I couldn't feel my legs anymore and uh, couldn't move them. So that was for me a decision to go lie down and yell for help. The guy who I was with, he was a little bit above me and yeah, he had to uh, go for help. Uh, it took about 45 minutes, I think, till the rescue guys were there. So I had uh, quite a long time with the Walkman, with the doors on, to to think about what happened. And uh, yeah, I think the, the first 10 minutes we were thinking and realizing that it could be the last time standing on my legs. And uh, yeah, then I had to think about a good friend of mine who was paralyzed from the neck. He had a car accident 10 years before me. And yeah, it was a hard moment. And but I think I thought about him and he has a good life and enjoys life still, even though he's in an electric wheelchair. And it, it, already at that moment, I thought, if it's this and I can never walk again, I have to see and make the best of this. I think it was the next summer. I was in rehab in the summer of 2001. And I had to recover my life a little bit and my plan was to go on, uh, on snow sports again the next winter so I didn't have to miss a winter but yeah, due to uh, complications and moving into a new house it didn't work out and I started uh, then wakeboarding again in the summer of 2002 with a special seat construction and with the help of my friends I got back on the water. When I was in, uh, in rehab I was in the in the gym of the rehab. There was a poster from a guy in a sit wakeboard, or on a water ski actually. And uh, I saw his legs, and it was small legs. And I thought it must be possible to go back on the water again. And for me, that one picture, yeah, meant a lot to me and gave me the inspiration, yeah, to go on with the sports I've I've done. They have a clinic of uh, sit skiing as well for the snow skiing. And yeah, there was no doubt in my mind that said not going back into snow. It was for me, it was obvious that there are possibilities to go back in snow and I wanted to try these, uh, these things. So in summer 2002, I started again with sit wakeboarding, not knowing what to expect. And yeah, for me, it was completely new world, not moving my legs anymore. People around you are telling you, oh, this is not possible anymore. It's going to be difficult and hard. Uh, once I start doing my sports again, you start easy with skiing and water skiing and then you realize, okay, there is something possible with this thing. Start making small tricks like spinning on the water with the water ski, uh, making carve turns with the sit ski in the snow. And yeah, bit by bit, I try to make little jumps. And I think in a very short period, I picked up the level in sit skiing where I stopped with snowboarding. And yeah, now I go faster on my sit ski than I ever been on a snowboard and I jump higher and further with my sit ski than I ever done with a snowboard. It has its limitations, but for sure there are also yeah, a lot of, oppor of uh, opportunities and possibilities with this equipment. Yeah, when, I, when I started sit skiing, I, had, uh, I tried uh, several uh, models of, uh, of sit skis. And I realized with the, the things I was doing with the freestyle sit skiing, I needed some strong equipment. And for that, I searched the internet, uh, searched for videos. Then I saw Stacy Cohut from Canada and he was riding the F1 sit ski. And although 
yeah, it was not maybe the best position sit ski. It was the most strongest sit ski on the market and tested to the fullest. So I bought that one and now I have a, a massively strong sit ski, uh, which is integrated with a, uh, there's an integrated shock from a motocross bike. And yeah, the construction is, uh, is so strong. It, it can handle a lot of impact and that was what I needed for, uh, for my thing to go on. So. Uh, by the time I ordered my sit ski, I tested some uh, sit skis, but I never t tested the sit ski I've, uh, I've have, I have now. But I, by seeing what Stacy Coet was doing with this sit ski, I thought this is my type of equipment, and I can rely that this equipment won't break when I come down from 10 meters from a cliff or something. It was very important for me, and uh, yeah, it's. It's modified for, for racing, downhill and super G and for the freestyle skiing. After my first uh, season in 2003, I got in contact uh, with the Dutch Disabled Ski Team. And they are into the races, the Euro Cup and the World Cup races. Because they told me I had talent in the sit ski. And for me, I, I wanted to have an opportunity to go as much in the snow as possible. And I thought if I go racing, maybe I can get some sponsorships and, and do what I want to do. And it worked out that way. I started uh, the first race in March 2004. And I ended up uh, in my first race at the eighth place in the slalom. Yeah, that was for me something, okay, this is a top 10 position. Maybe it was a bit luck because of the conditions and a lot of good guys crashed, but uh, yeah, I was there and I immediately thought oh, this racing is something cool and can get me to a higher level in technique. Um, then I had a couple of top 15 places in Euro Cup and now we're in 2007-8. In that season I made some top 11 places in the World Cup and I won the last Super G in the Euro Cup race. So it gives me a lot of uh, trust for the future in, uh, in my way to the Paralympics. Uh, the Winter X Games is uh, yeah, one of the biggest, or not, it is the biggest extreme sports event in the world. And they decided to give the monoskier cross a chance uh, on their event. After the exhibition, they said, okay, what you guys are doing, even though you're disabled, this is extreme and this uh, belongs on our uh, extreme games. And our X Games, and I think for a sport, for a disabled sport, to be implemented in a regular sports event for able-bodied sporters, even though for me it's like we're all sporters, but yeah, I think it's the biggest reward uh, a disabled sport can get to to get uh, no, uh, known as the same level as what these guys standing are doing, and I'm very proud to be a monoskier. In in mono skiing. Uh, the the regular alpine disciplines are very famous, and uh, a lot of uh, guys participate in this uh, in this competition. In 2005, they had an exhibition uh, on uh, the Winter X Games for the mono skier cross. It's Challenge Aspen, the adaptive ski program in uh, in Aspen, uh, got in contact with the X Games organization, and they decided to give it a try to have the mono skier cross. Uh, then it was only American guys starting in the monoskier cross. It was uh, successful and the organization decided to make it a serious event in 2007. Uh, I have a very big website with a lot of footage from sit skiing and some American guys found my website and told the organization maybe you have to invite this guy to come over. Even though they didn't know me, they know me by my footage and they, uh, yeah, I got an invitation and of course for me it it's all my thing to go jumping and stuff and it was uh, it was a big challenge to to enter the X Games so in the first year I entered the X Games I was not well prepared and uh, we were maybe a little bit amateuristic I was with a twin tip ski and not with a race ski but I made it to the finals and I ended up third in the in the first year and for me that was already a big achievement because the guys next to me were winners from Paralympics and World Cup winners in the Alpine disciplines. But this was something completely new and uh, after the first run with the, all the slides and the jumps and the, the, the humpty-doos, 
I thought this is it. If you go fast on this thing, you can go on and on. It gives you a boost. So yeah, for me it was uh, obvious to come back next year. And uh, yeah, in 2008 it was for me a dream, more than a dream coming through. I would have never expected to win the Winter X Games Monoski or Cross. It was for me one of the biggest achievements so far in life. On the mountain people look yeah, sometimes very strange to you, like what is this equipment and uh, it's so nice they make this for you and to have this opportunity. I don't think these people realize what is possible in, in this sit ski. I had to discover this on my own and uh, there's not many guys doing freestyle sit skiing. I wanted to do the jumps and I started with the smaller jumps and then more and more jumping higher and realizing that this, uh, this sit ski thing can go way bigger than it is now and uh, there are not many guys jumping because it has some risk but I think also the racing has a lot of risk. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with my sit ski I ride in the fun parks and I try to do all obstacles other guys do on a snowboard or on freestyle skis. Uh, I do boxes, rails, king trails. Uh, it's sometimes very hard because you can crash hard on the rails. Uh, my specialty is uh, big jumps. I, I ride a lot of kickers and that's from 10 meters. I started very small and learned that if you make bigger air time, sometimes it's easier to control the whole thing. You have to be strong in the head, but uh, no, and now I make jumps from 20 to 25 meters standard, four or five meters high. And that's, that's my thing. I also make tricks now, starting to make 180s over smaller jumps, uh, making spins in the half pipe and try to jump out of the half pipe. It works, but yeah, it's, it needs a lot of courage and, uh, and practice to, uh, to make sure because you don't want to damage your shoulder too much because you're in the wheelchair and you need your arms. So it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to push the level once you're alone. And, uh, yeah, sometimes if you get a little bit hurt it holds you back for a couple of weeks and yeah, I hope in the future also there will be more guys trying to do the things I do. In the summer I do wakeboarding and for me it's the wakeboarding is like a good training and exercise for the winter time. I use uh, some different parts of my body to control the water ski but that makes that yeah there's a good balance in, in the shape of my muscles because of the wakeboarding I get strong arms and yeah I use them on another way than when I use my out triggers and I think it's a good yeah it, it levels good together to go wakeboarding in the summer and skiing in the winter time it's uh, it, it has some uh, yeah overlap and yeah, it, it feels feels on Uh, on the wakeboard I start doing uh, 180s and since I realized how to manage the 180 in a sit position I thought okay why not try this in the snow over a jump and yeah, I think also because of the technique I had with the wakeboarding there you have the line to pull yourself and yeah the, the body position I try to make a move in the snow and it seemed to work out so now I make 180s in the snow as well. Uh, since I'm in a wheelchair, I discovered many people have uh, not the right point of view about how it is to live with a handicap. It's, uh, it's always like, oh, I feel pity for you. And of course, it's not nice to be in a wheelchair or to be paralyzed. But yeah, if I see what I do in life, I can enjoy my life to the fullest, even though I cannot walk. There are so much things to do and so much to enjoy your life. And with KJ Projects, I uh, integrate my philosophy into this company and I work as a freelancer in diverse projects and I go to schools to give information classes to kids uh, about how it is to live with a handicap. And that from a different point of view to show if you do what you can do, what you're able to do, do it. And as a, an able-bodied person, uh, I think my biggest lesson is let able-bodied persons have to give uh, disabled people the chance to do something on their own. And sometimes it's hard because 
it looks maybe uh, a difficult way when people with a handicap are doing something uh, but achieving something on your own even though it's small things for guys who have uh, less power in their hands to eat their own breakfast if some nurse comes and they put the bread in it's finished for the day and maybe it takes them 45 minutes to do them on their own but if there's nothing else to do on that day so I try uh, yeah, to, to make people aware of the importance of achieve something on your own even though it takes a little bit longer it's good for the self-esteem and yeah you need this in in daily life if you're have if you have no self-esteem there's no way you can get into uh, a solicitation or an uh, uh, a job uh, interview so yeah if you have no self-esteem it's very hard to go into a job interview or something and i think that's important in life Uh, since this year they asked me uh, to be uh, ambassador of the Dutch Foundation for Handicapped Sports. Uh, with all I'm doing and my, the ideal I have also with my, uh, with my company. Uh, I think it's for me, it's, it's a good position uh, since what I do with my sport is very extreme. I don't encourage anybody to do what I do because it has a certain risk for sure and it needs a lot of mentality, mental strong, of strength. But yeah, to show this to other people, I hope to motivate and to inspire other people just to maybe do 10 or 20 percent from what I do and let them see that there's a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of things are possible in life. And for me, I have so much strength from the things I do with sports that I can go on till I'm 80 without getting de depressed. That's what I say always, and I hope it's like that because you can never uh, say what happens in life, but. It made me stronger and the sports helped me and now to be an ambassador of the Dutch Foundation uh, yeah, it, it gives me a more uh, a bigger platform to show people what's, uh, what they're able to. Uh, this winter season my goal is to, uh, to reach the, the qualification limits for the Paralympics in Vancouver 2010. Um, my specialty is here in is, uh, Super G and Downhill. So I want to qualify for that for sure. And beside that, I have to defend the medal on, uh, in Aspen on the Winter X Games. And yeah, I think that's my two biggest goals to, uh, to compete in the World Cup and to have good results for the Paralympics and, uh, and hopefully the one-time event in Aspen to, uh, to, to keep my medal.